Okay, Shad, Shad, Shadrang, Allah, Tun, Kalori, Daha Hossein, Arundari, and Birch. Thank you all for being here. After a hundred years, we're still here and we're commemorating the hundredth anniversary. And your presence here says more than anything any eloquent speaker can say. We're not forgetting and that's much appreciated. Uh, before we get into anything, I'm going to be very brief because we have speakers. Uh, I'd like very much to thank the city. Uh, we're on the city thing. Every year we do this with their flag and the Armenian flag. So I'd like to express our appreciation uh, from the ARF and the ANCA. Uh, we thank the city for all they've done. Permit me also to do another thank you. Although it was done last night, uh, I'd like to thank very much Jim Boren and Bill McE McEwen from the Fresno Bee. The coverage they've been giving the genocide has been exemplary. So, Shadshran Galtian on myself. Our theme has been and is don't forget. You'll hear that from Debbie a lot. But I want you to know that right now in front of the Turkish Embassy, well, not yet, but in front of the Turkish Embassy in Washington, D.C., there'll be a commemoration for just like we're doing here. However, just to let you know we're not forgetting, the Turks are busing in 5,000 uh, Turkish people to be in front of their embassy. They don't have that many in that area. But what does it mean that they have to bus in that many to refute what we're trying to commemorate? I think that's very significant. Thanks to people like you. I'm going to get off now because I want to introduce Debbie. Uh, it's not just anybody that we have up here as the MC. Uh, yesterday we had an MC. I think that also was a Puchigian. But you also know that famous old Armenian uh, saying, we saved the best for last. So anyway, um, I'd like to mention about Debbie. We say don't forget. In Armenia, they have a museum as well as a monument. And in the museum, it shows seven provinces that were uh, killed most, the most. Two of those provinces are Erzurum and Kharpert. And as you might know, uh, that's where Debbie's family comes from. So when she says, don't forget, it comes from uh, folks like that. And one of her, her father's mother, Anna, came from a small village in Kharpert. Many of here are Kharpertsis. But uh, they came from a little village called Huilu. And as you might guess, the Bedrosian clan also came from Kuilu. So they're Kanami Gahatsunen. Anyway, <laughs> anyway, let me just turn this over to our very cal uh, capable and wonderful Debbie Puchigan. Thank you. Good morning. Let me do an adjustment here. Hold on. Members of the clergy, honorary council, elected representatives, members of the judiciary, and friends of the Armenian American community, and the Armenian American community, thank you so much for joining us this morning for the 100th anniversary commemoration of the Armenian Genocide. Today, Armenians around the world join in solemn services to commemorate the day in 1915 when Armenian clergy, Scholars, community leaders were taken from their homes before dawn and murdered. April 24th, 1915 was the beginning of the first genocide of the 20th century. This morning we come together to honor our past. We come together to recognize the truth. In tribute to those who died in the genocide, we are opening our program this morning with the singing of the Lord's Prayer. 
Haimed in Armenian. We're singing it in Armenian. I would invite all members of the clergy, I'm honored to invite our members of the clergy forward to lead us in Haimed. A company also singing will be Haigo Ohaneshin. And as you pay tribute, everybody in Fresno has a story about the genocide. As they are singing, and as we are paying tribute to our families, the victims and the survivors, I invite you to sing High Mid with our clergy and Haigo Ohaneshin. Please. Thank you. Good. This morning we have several uh, people we would like to introduce that have taken time from their busy schedules to be with us today. And it is a, a it's not a huge list, but there are quite a few people that we want to thank. So uh, if you'll just bear with me, I would ask everyone that is uh, introduced to please stand and remain standing. First of all, starting with our clergy. Father Vahan Gostanian, Holy Trinity Armenian Church, Reverend Ara Gukasian, Pilgrim Armenian Congregational Church, Father Yehia Herabijan, St. Gregory Armenian Church of Fowler, Reverend Greg Haratunian, First Armenian Presbyterian Church, Honorary Council of the Republic of Armenia in Fresno, Berge Apkarian. I, I know that, uh, let's see, let me go down. Congressman Jim Costa. Hang on, hold on, we're gonna keep going. Members of the Judiciary, Fifth District Court of Appeal Justice Chuck Puchigian, Mayor of the City of Fresno, Ashley Swearingen, Fresno Council President Oliver Baines, Council Member Steve Brandau, Council Member Paul Capriolio, Camp Council Member Sal Quintero, Council Men Member Esmeralda Soraya, Clovis Unified School District Board Member Ginny Hovsepian, um, I do believe that Shelly Abajan, if she's out there representing Senator Feinstein, please come join us. We have Tom Bohegan representing Senator Boxer. We have Mary Alice Kalushian and Shannon Major representing Senator Tom Berryhill. I think we have Christine Kep uh, Kaprelian representing Andy Vidak. I don't know if you see a trend here, but we've got Abajan, Bohegan, Kalushian, Kaprelian. These are all legislative. Uh, staff members of our elected representatives. We've got for um, Assemblyman Jim Patterson, Jane Jaglashian Metcalf. And if I missed anybody, I apologize, but we thank all of our elected officials and representatives for taking time today.
Thank you. At this time, I would like to invite the Fresno, Fresno Sassoon Chapter of Minuteman Schools and the Design Science High School, ROTC of Fresno, to take their positions at the flagpoles. Company. Accompanied by the Sounds of Freedom Band, we have Haigo Ohaneshin singing the National Anthem of the United States of America as the Design Science High School ROTC raises the flag of the United States.
And now, to raise the flag of the Republic of Armenia, the Fresno Sassoon chapter of the Homenitman Scouts, again with the Sounds of Freedom Band and Haigo Ohaneshin.
Thank you. You may be seated. Again, that was D Design Science High School ROTC and the Fresno Sassoon Chapter of Hominiman Scouts. Please give them another round of applause. Our first speaker this morning was elected to office in 2008 and has hosted this flag raising ceremony each year here at City Hall. For comments on behalf of the City of Fresno, please welcome Mayor Ashley Swearingen. Thank you so much, Supervisor Puchigian. Good morning to all of you. It is indeed a privilege to be here on behalf of the residents of the community of Fresno. We stand together with you this morning and commemorate the 100 year anniversary of the beginning of the Armenian Genocide. When I think back over just the last 24 hours and I consider the emotions and the, the beauty of the commemoration ceremonies that we've seen this year, I am truly overwhelmed. And I'm not Armenian, even though I always argue that I'm very close. Missed it by one letter. But I know, having been yesterday at the street naming ceremony and now seeing Armenia shouted from the streets of downtown Fresno and then being last night at the absolutely unbelievable unveiling of the monument at Fresno State, I am once again truly overwhelmed truly overwhelmed. These ceremonies stand to remind us of the legacy, your legacy. And it's a reminder to me of the way in which the Armenian people faced adversity with determination, but most importantly with faith. And so today, we join you as residents of the city of Fresno in honoring your legacy of faith. We give thanks for the way in which your families, your ancestors, stared down the face of death, in some cases paying the ultimate price, but in all cases, believing in the pursuit of faith, in the pursuit of determination, and in the pursuit of righteousness. So we join you on behalf of the residents of the city of Fresno, we join you in honoring that commitment, that powerful, moving commitment that you all now carry in your very DNA. We honor you and we join you in remembering the events of a hundred years ago. And also we join you in giving thanks to our God who has in response been faithful to the Armenian people and been faithful to our community. 
and we thank God for his faithfulness to us today. So with that, please know that we stand with you. We thank you for your contributions to our community, and we look forward to the next generation of faith and leadership that comes from the American Armenian community. Thank you, and God bless you. Our next speaker has been a district director to Central Valley legislators since 1994. She began her service with Assemblyman and then State Senator Chuck Pichigian and currently works with Senator Tom Berryhill of the 16th Senate District. Please welcome Mary Alice Kalushjan. typical spring day. The weather was cool and the skies were dark and cloudy. It looked like it might rain. The weather was typical for that time of year, but the movement of the Armenian people was not. They would very soon discover that life as they knew it in their beloved homeland was going to be destroyed. This is how it was explained to us by my grandmother and my great-grandmother as we sat at their feet. Good morning. My name is Mary Alice Kalushjian. And I am a proud Harbertsi, and I am a proud granddaughter of genocide survivors. During my childhood, my grandparents would speak about their life before the genocide. They lived very comfortably with a large home and servants. They described the beautiful fruit trees in their gardens and that they would bear the largest and most delicious fruit. And they would reminisce about the view from their house, which was up on a hill overlooking the town. They spoke of the evening skies that were illuminated with stars, and they would sit on the top floor of their house and stargaze all night long. Such sweet memories. However, there were signs that things were about to change as the Turks began to treat the Armenians differently. The Armenians were quite successful despite the Turks oppressing rules for them as they were taxed more than the Turks and scrutinized for their Christian beliefs. My great-grandfather decided that it would be best for him to come to America and secure a place and then send for his wife and daughter to join him. Unfortunately, soon after his departure, the genocide began. The unimaginable occurred. No one could have anticipated the magnitude of this mass murder plot. My great-grandmother would describe how her father and brother were killed right in front of her. An uncle who was a priest would be beheaded right in front of them. Relatives executed and much, much worse. They were told to leave their valuables and other belongings as they would return soon. Well, that day never came. Death marches were everywhere, young, old, babies in mother's arms, all walking to escape death, ironically to their death. They would describe how the beautiful river was now running red from the blood of the bodies that were thrown in it. Many of you have some version of this story of your family. Look around, each person here today has some version of this story. I am grateful to share a bit of my family's story, but any one of you could be up here talking about similar experiences. And we should be talking about it with our friends, our neighbors, our coworkers, and especially our kids. My grandparents' message to us was, I tell you this not so you hate, but so you know what happened. The Turks' goal was to eliminate every Armenian from the face of this earth. Once they emptied a village of Armenians, they would assume their land, their home, their businesses, their schools, and bank accounts. They would steal what was ours and made it theirs. My grandmother Mary and my great-grandmother Ahavni were separated and neither knew of the other's survival. They were taken as servants for Turkish families and not treated very well. My great-grandmother had a scar on her head where she was repeatedly hit and her earlobes were torn because a Turkish girl wanted her gold earrings and ripped them from her ears. My great-grandmother learned of my grandmother's survival and the fact that the Turkish family where she was staying was going to marry her off to a Turkish boy. 
my great grandmother snuck into that house and rescued my grandmother, and both of them escaped into the night. They fled to France and then to the United States. There are many things I remember about my childhood, like fresh lavash being baked almost every Saturday morning, always chodag in our freezer and mazun in our refrigerator. There were eight in total at my house. My dad, George, and my mom, Jackie, my great-grandmother, Avavni, and my great-grandfather, Hampartsum, my grandmother, Mariam, my sister, Linda, and my brother, Marty, and me. My grandfather, Mardiros, passed away before I was born. We were four generations living under one roof in our loving home on our farm, happily. I will never forget the unconditional love that we had in our home. I will never forget that through all the horrific things that my grandmother and great-grandmother witnessed, they still had unwavering faith. Unwavering faith in our Lord Jesus Christ and unwavering faith in mankind. Many times I remember that we would be playing inside the house and my grandmother would ask us to put, on, put Armenian music on. And my grandmother and great-grandmother with her cane would get up and dance and smile while truly feeling the music. I think back now, what do they have to dance about or smile about? They witnessed the worst example of man's inhumanity to man, yet they danced. It proved to me that the Armenian spirit cannot be broken. You see, I shouldn't be here today. In fact, if the Turks had, had been successful, none of us would have been here today. Their goal was to erase us from this earth. Well, they failed. I saw firsthand the constitution of the genocide survivors. It was unshakable. They came to this country not speaking a word of English and made this country their own. No one handed them anything. All they had, all they achieved, was done with hard work and perseverance. They were grateful and patriotic Armenian Americans to their last breath. I think the author William Soroyan captured the essence of the Armenian spirit when he wrote, I should like to see any power of the world destroy this race, this small tribe of unimportant people whose wars have all been fought and lost, whose structures have crumbled, literature is unread, music is unheard, and prayers are no more answered. Go ahead, destroy Armenia, see if you can do it. Send them into the desert without bread or water, burn their homes and their churches, then see if they will not laugh, sing, and pray again. For when two of them meet anywhere in the world, see if they will not create a new Armenia. Thank you. Thank you. Yet Chartin Azadad Hai Tornigem, Yev Habad Hadbertsiem. Mer bad mutuna tishpahte, bites mish betke bad mink mer bad mutuna, yev mana vant odar nerun. Betke sorbet sinik yev dasad nerun charting masin, betke chigaining poselu charting masin. Hairur dari yeger yevan sere, yev turka tache antuner irens han sanka. Inch veskanan mornal, i bad mutunere, vor mens mires bad mens mezi. Inch vespidi mornan irens artsunk nere, yev forga hosein charting masin. Inch vespidi mornan verke mens mairigis kohumbra, urvor turka devagan zargadze. Inch veska mornan irens avot nere, vorga hentrein hisus pergicin imastutun. Voch yes chem mornal, yev chem ginal harsenel inchu. Sireli har nagitsner hima yerchani gorer gan mezi. Yerchani gen gorder mer hayutuna zora gore. Mer hayutuna gare gore. Menk martutem cheng zongikar gor. Gorder mer jagalakira pailune. Germanagag zin gori meze Adolf Hitler ye por de joser heriain vijagayen. Asab ay sorbov ki hishe hayere. Ye menke sente menke hishe. Menke hishe ki amen dari abril kasana chorsin vidi hishe. Mer and Dainikin Zohala Tuna, Yev Chibidi Moranang, Shonara Galo Tuna, Mercy. Thank you, Mary Alice. Please welcome the children from the Charlie K. and Armenian Community School of Fresno for a musical selection.
All the way up.
Thank you, boys and girls. Ladies and gentlemen, this is the future of the Armenian American community in Fresno. So look into their eyes and see the love that they have. My father's mother, Anna Boyajin, Kaligian, was a survivor of the genocide. And she stressed three important values. Love God, love your family, and never forget your past. She would tell my father, Daras Chamornas, which translated is, my boy, never forget. And it, my dad made it his mission to instill in his three children and his nine grandchildren the love of God, the love of family, and never forgetting our past. And so I say to you, for your grandchildren, for your great-grandchildren, for your nieces and nephews, Dagas Chamornas, Achjigas Chamornas, it's our job to make sure that they remember their past, they love God, and they love their families. Our next speaker is a former Fresno City Council member and currently represents the second district on the Fresno County Board of Supervisors. Please welcome Supervisor Andreas Borges. Sireli Bare Gamner. It is with great humility I stand before you as a high pesa, as a friend of the Armenian community, as a Greek, and as a Fresno. Today we commemorate a dark anniversary we hoped wouldn't come to pass without the recognition you deserve. Indeed, all of humanity deserves. 100 years is very much a long time to, to await justice. But today, let us not be limited to the singular goal of genocide recognition. Today, we also celebrate all that embodies the spirit of Armenia and what it means to be Armenian. Like many of you here today, the genocide carries great personal significance to my family. My wife's grandmother, the matriarch of our family, was a genocide survivor. As a young girl, she survived the burning of Smyrna in 1922 and was given refuge in Greece, later coming to Fresno in the 1970s. I will never, never forget Kayane Arakelian telling me her story, the intimate details of her family's tragedy, of her, of her loss of innocence, and how she was among the generations scattered to the diaspora. But she reminded me that in addition to the 1.5 million Armenians, over half a million Greeks were also annihilated during that dark period too. In Greek, she once said to me, Andrea, Thimase, Tomikrasiatiki, Katastrophe, Takalevenis. Andreas, remember the minor Asian catastrophe because you too are connected to the genocide. You here are all a testament to the true meaning of survival. Descendants of those who refuse to give up and who refuse to give in. Many of your relatives managed to survive, stopping in other countries before finding their home in America. As refugees, they survived in Syria, Lebanon, Greece, France, just to name a few. Countries that were foreign to them. But there they slowly rebuilt their lives, learned new languages, they worked, and used informal networks to learn news of family and friends who were similarly situated. But they were survivors. By hard work and determined, came to California and became contributing members of our society. In the valley alone, their positive influence is unmistakable. Out of the ruins of the Ottoman Empire, 
We in Fresno County celebrate how you have made our community even better. I'd like to take a moment to share some of your community references within the context of some of William Soroyan's words. Go ahead, destroy Armenia and Minor Asia. See if you can do it. But see if the Armenians will not laugh, sing, and pray again on Ventura Avenue, in Sunnyside, and in the agricultural fields of Fowler. For when two of them meet in Fresno County, see if they will not create a new Armenia in the San Joaquin Valley. Have the Armenians in Fresno... <laughs> Have the Armenians in Fresno not done so? Not created a little Armenia? Let's highlight a few of the community's accomplishments. You proudly have five Armenian churches in the sense of community they collectively foster. Fresno recently had one of its own named as the first honorary consul of the Republic of Armenia. That's a special show, absolutely. We have an Armenian school which serves our youngest members, which we heard from moments ago a thriving Armenian studies program at Fresno State and a sister city relationship with the city of Etchmiazin. And Armenians have assumed positions of leadership in virtually every sector, some becoming business titans, international philanthropists, esteemed politicians, appellate judges, educators, and world-renowned artists. Saroyan was right when he declared that it only takes two Armenians to create a new Armenia. So with a population estimated at 40,000, the Armenians have forever changed Fresno County. <laughs> While I've done so for years, today I'm not going to focus on the demands that Turkey recognize the genocide. Because that would require leaders in Turkey to have character, integrity, accountability, and a sense of humanity. Nor am I going to demand that President Obama fulfill his campaign pledge because that too would require him to have character, integrity, accountability, and a sense of humanity. Because only when those traits return to politicians will we have the recognition we deserve. That does not mean, however, that we are giving up on what is right. <clears throat> For this fight is eternal and will eventually overcome the lobbying efforts of the powers that be. The Armenian strength is that you will continue to define the future and what it means for the human cause. We must carry on to achieve recognition, but recognition alone is not a terminal endeavor. It is part of a larger dynamic pursuit just as Armenians faced crisis in Ottoman Turkey 100 years ago, let us not forget that Armenians today still face an existential threat in Artsakh. Situated near hostile powers, Azerbaijan and Turkey, we can honor those who earlier fell by vindicating the rights of those precariously situated in Artsakh. In a few days, I will travel to Nagorno-Karabakh to serve as a political observer in the national elections. I was honored to be invited by the Chairman of the National Assembly. While there, I will observe their elections to make, to make certain they are consistent with democratic principles. Elections like these are helping create a free and democratic process and are the foundations for their sovereignty and national independence. Ironically, Artsakh, too, is undergoing its own efforts to be recognized. While there, I hope to make you proud. I will carry with me a sense of purpose that both honors those who have sacrificed as well as those responsible for remembering them. Thank you all for allowing me to speak today and most of all for considering me to be one of your own. As the plaque at Fresno County statue of David Sassoon writes, 
We thank you, Fresno County, for taking us in our darkest hour and giving us the opportunity to be reborn. Chi pedi mornang. Thank you, Supervisor Borges. Assemblyman, Senator, and now representing California's 16th Congressional District in the House of Representatives, a longtime friend of the Armenian community, please welcome Congressman Jim Costa. Thank you very much, Supervisor Pachigan. Clergy, Consul General Burge. Yeah, you can applaud for Burge. Everybody loves Burge. Mayor Ashley, members of the Fresno City Council, and our own Supervisor Debbie Pachigan, with her husband, the judge. Good morning, ladies and gentlemen. We can do better than that. Good morning. It is a glorious morning because we are all together. Feel the warmth, feel the passion, feel the heartfelt community that is exhibited by Armenian Americans, not only here in our San Joaquin Valley, but throughout our nation and throughout the world. Wednesday, I was a part of the Armenian caucus in our nation's capital to recognize, sadly, and commemorate this 100th anniversary. And I will tell you what I tell them, what I tell, say, every year at this gathering. I come from the land of William Soroyan. And my name is Aram. Today, regardless of where we came from, we are all Armenian. So you can call me Jim Costigan. As, as Debbie noted, growing up in Kearney Park, not far from here, with the Collegians, with the Abrahamians, with the Kazarians, with these wonderful families. As a young person, I learned the story of the Armenian Genocide. I learned it from the children and grandchildren of those who were a part of this horrific genocide, the first genocide in the 20th century. So as we reflect on this 100th anniversary, not only here this morning in Fresno, but last night at Fresno State, the first monument dedicated to the Armenian Genocide in an American university anywhere in the country. We must take this opportunity to let the world know that the Armenian people did not and will not silently go into the night. It's that simple. Because after the diaspora, the remaining communities persevered, thrived, and have done so much to make the world and our communities here in this valley a better place to live. That's true. Growing up in Fresno, home of so many noted Armenian Americans, you learn about the story of the tragedy. But we also learn that silence is genocide's best ally. Not only will we never ever forget, but we will continue to speak out against genocide committed 100 years ago today and genocide that continues to persevere around the world today in the 21st century. We must speak out. 
Achieving peace today requires recognizing the dark parts of the history of mankind and moving forward to find a place of understanding and cooperation. As the president said when he was senator, the Armenian genocide is not an allegation, a personal opinion, or a point of view, but rather it's a widely documented fact. Sadly, the president chose not to use the word genocide again this year. But members of the international community have, including the European Parliament, Canada, France, Russia, and many other organizations throughout the world recognizing a genocide for what it is. And sadly, this was the first genocide in the 20th, 21st, 20th century. So we have our lessons from history in which we must never forget. And that is man's inhumanity to mankind still exists today. While displaying the orphan, Armenian orphan rug that uh, the Consul General and I visited earlier this year at the White House Visitor Center was a move in the right direction, it's certainly not enough. We have to ask, we have to ask if the United States does not officially recognize the Armenian genocide today in Congress by the President, then not now, then when? It's never the right time. I tell you the right time is today. We say this not because recognizing the Armenian Genocide, this 100th anniversary, will end the hardship, the suffering, and the lack of civility that needs to occur between Armenia and Turkey and other parts of peoples in that part of the world, in Asia Minor. But we believe that by recognizing the 100th anniversary, it will be a beginning and not an end, so that relations will improve in that part of the world. And they begin to improve when we recognize the root causes of the conflict. So it is my hope, as I know it is your hope, that Armenia and Turkey will begin to work toward an equitable, strong relationship. But it must begin first with Turkey's recognition of the Armenian Genocide. <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, this is a time of commemoration. It's a time for families and friends to come together. Let me thank you thank each and every one of you in having the opportunity to represent each and every one of you in our nation's capital. God bless the martyrs of the Armenian Genocide. God bless the United States of America. Thank you so very much. Before I introduce our next speaker, I, I want to recognize we have uh, former mayor of the city of Visalia and currently Visalia City Council member, Amy Shuklian is here. Our keynote speaker this morning has deep roots in the Central Valley. Five generations, starting with his grandparents, Kaspar and Sidun Hovanishin. He is a well-respected member and leader in the California Armenian American community where he and his entire family have four generations been champions of Armenian causes everywhere from the Central Valley, throughout the diaspora, and in the Republic of Armenia. Armen Hovanishin attended UC Berkeley, UCLA School of Law, and has practiced law in California since 1987. He is the founder and currently serves as the chairman of the Armenian Bar Association and continues to work tirelessly on efforts to achieve full recognition of the Armenian Genocide. Giving his passion for the Armenian people and for justice, it is no surprise that his grandfather was a Gamavod, or a freedom fighter in General Antranik's army. 
please welcome my very good friend, Mr. Armin Hovanishian. Is the destruction of an entire nation quantifiable? Is the decimation of nearly all of its people measurable? Is what was lost and what was taken recoverable by any stretch of imagination or of our efforts? Can the declaration of a president, of our president, or the decision of a court of law ever make us whole? These would be welcome developments, of course, but they could not completely fix the problem. What would heal the open wound is for the Republic of Turkey to get off the dime of denial and face the terrible truth of the great crime and of its consequences. As I look among you, I see that we have gathered here today from virtually every segment of our community. We are here, as your t-shirts say, to remember and to demand. We're here to release the anger and the anguish in our hearts. We're here with one hand to close and clench our fists, and with the other open hand to welcome efforts of repair. On this, on this, the 100th anniversary of the Armenian apocalypse. The reality is that our nation's destruction has left none of us untouched. It has left none of us unscathed. It has not left none of us able to say that the blood that is flowing through your veins is the very same blood that stained desert earth, desert sand, and village earth 100 years ago, today, right now, on this day, at this hour. As we honor our fallen today, as the supervisor, as the mayor, as the congressman, as Mary Alice have said so eloquently, we should remember those who remain standing. We should give thanks to the early generations of Armenian Americans who made sacrifices for all of us, giving foundation to our families and to our country. Ordinary men and women, your grandparents and mine, who worked in the wire factories of Worcester, Massachusetts, in the rubber plants of Watertown, in the iron and steel mills of Granite City and Waukegan, Illinois, on the assembly lines in Detroit, Michigan, in the cement plants of Riverside, California, and especially in this valley, in the orchards and vineyards of Fowler, Fresno, Tulare, and Visalia. It is, ladies and gentlemen, it is that wounded but never say die generation that fortified our backbone, gave us our confidence, and allowed for our success today. And while many today see success as power and prestige, success back then, real success was measured by the obstacles overcome to keep the dream alive and available to our and their children. Speaking of children, two little girls who were to loom large in my life, were born just three months and 300 miles apart in a world away from California. One in the historic Armenian Kestrik village and the other in the picturesque seaside town of Ordu. Soon enough, my grandmothers, as those two little girls, were to become strangers by circumstance and then friends in fate in future. On April 24, 1915, under this day's sky, Sirun, who had come to be known as Sarah, and whose family had immigrated to the San Joaquin Valley a few years before 1915, was busy skipping rope, jumping hopscotch, and picking up jacks with her girlfriends 
from Cherry Avenue Elementary School. She was to graduate from Tulare Union High School, marry a giant man, Kaspar, and name her four sons, John, Ralph, Richard, and Vernon, into whom she cemented security, confidence, the United States of America, and the English language. She took the lead as easily in the Emblem Club and the PTA as she did in the Armenian Relief Society and in the kitchen uh, of the Ladies Guild at Holy Trinity Church. Her sprawling ranch-style house on Butler Avenue, not too far from here, with its thick wood shingle roof, overlooked the Sunnyside Country Club, a place that for many years said Armenians verboten, not allowed. She drove a white Cadillac with a soft and smooth velvet interior. And just maybe, just maybe Grandma Sirun muttered under her breath, damn the country club. And had Kaspa lived just a little longer, he just may have bought the whole darn golf course itself. He wouldn't have played a round of golf most probably, but that would show them. Now the other little girl, the other little girl was Khanguhi, and despite her wry smile in the black and white photograph on the credenza, with pigtails in her hair and a tennis racket in her hands, bid goodbye to most of her family on that fateful day 100 years ago, right now. And although she survived the genocide, Khanguhi's smile was turned down that day once and forever. In the years and decades to come, in picture after picture, it was one visual dirge, one unmitigated lament after another. It was a funeral procession that lasted nearly all of my grandmother's 91 years, 50 years in this country, and she still spoke English in choppy sentences with misconjugated verb and mixed up tenses. But what she did speak with is with expressive and tearful eyes. She went to no schools in America. She made no friends here. She played no games. She bent her back. She swallowed her pride. And she went to work in Fresno's fields. She married the quiet strength Avartiter and Nazik. The son she lost was to, mean, to be named Varej. Varej in Armenian means revenge. And maybe that boy had to die for his name to live in us. Khungui's small home on Low Avenue, a mile away from here, with its meager, decaying roof, was similar to the hundreds that Kaspar gathered. She never drove a car, and neither did Hovakim. As we mark the centennial of the Armenian genocide, I struggle to fully understand, like I said, what was lost, what was taken. Was it only the childhood of Khungui? Was it only the roots of Sirun? Were their sorrows and anguish that much different from one another at the end of the day? Were they not both disinherited and dispossessed of their destinies, displaced even from themselves? My grandmothers and yours shared a common fundamental characteristic. They faced the darkness and insisted on a future for their families. They took silent oaths to never give up, to say yes to life, and to believe in the possibility of justice. With the stories of these two little girls, and in my life, and the stories of your families engraved in yours, we must see to it that the chronic pain and the effects of the genocide are not dehumanized, that they're not examined numerically, analytically, scientifically, and that their significance is never lost or forgotten. Only when it is personalized, only when you take the genocide home with you, will it be real enough 
to make a difference in the decisions you make. These memories of hardship and of our president's broken promises, not only this president's, a long line of presidents, they may test our hopes and try our conscience, but memory, ladies and gentlemen, is our sacred duty, not simply to remember, however, but to act. Let us tell the world not only how our people died, but how they lived, how they loved, how they dreamed, and how they hoped. Remember this, remember this, remember this. Remembrance without resolve is a hollow gesture, and awareness without action changes nothing. In conclusion, it's a simple truth. It's a simple truth that we are more than the genocide. But the trauma, the trauma of the genocide skews perspective. It blurs the horizon and renders the future a mirage. See, this is the purpose of genocide itself, to erase the people, to erase the nation in the mind of the people who remain and to erase everything else from the identity of the rest of us. It's a disgusting truth, but this is what genocide is. Look around. Today, the genocide may be our single most commonly shared trait of group identity, particularly outside of Armenia. Even a look at those who we consider or who consider themselves Armenians quickly shows that it is entirely possible that neither language, location, vocation, cuisine, culture, religion, or even genetics links one Armenian to another in the same way that the genocide does. And this should disturb us. It should frighten us that we are left holding more hands in our trauma than in our dances, left shifting more pride in our protests than in our literature, left embracing one another more in commemoration than in our celebration. This should disturb us. We are not museum pieces. We are a living nation, surely with stories still to tell and epics yet to write. It is now time, ladies and gentlemen, for us to champion our progress, not only our perseverance, we must wake up tomorrow with a consciousness that is both rooted in the Armenian genocide and which rises above it as well, that insists that we Armenians forevermore define our identity not by what was done to us, but what, by what we do from this day forward. As we enter tonight and tomorrow, the second century after the genocide, we, I have to say, in all modesty, are poised and prepared to take care of ourselves. It may also be time for us not merely to seek shards of solace and recognition and splinters of victory in, in, in resolutions. While we appreciate everything that our country, the United States of America, and the world community have done especially in the aftermath of the Armenian Genocide, maybe, just maybe, it's time that we don't pin all of our hopes on, on somebody else to make us whole. From now on, let our redemption begin and end with us. God bless the souls. God bless the souls of all those 100 years ago who gave their lives so that we would have ours. And God give us the strength and the wisdom to live and walk in the shadow of their sacrifice and spirit. Thank you. Thank you, Armin.
A couple of uh, just housekeeping I'd like to, uh, events I'd like to make you aware of. The Armenian Studies Program, along, along with the Armenian Students Organization of uh, Cal State University Fresno, is sponsoring their annual genocide commemoration at noon today, from noon to 1.15 today at the newly constructed Armenian Genocide Monument on campus at the north end of the Maple Mall. Second, this evening at St. Paul Armenian Church at the corner of First and Dakota, beginning at 7 p.m., there will be special ser church services. Tomorrow evening at Soroyan Theater, beginning at 7.30, the Fresno Philharmonic will present a concert entitled Witness and Rebirth, the Armenian Journey. There are a group of people that will be going out to Ararat and Masis Cemetery just following this uh, program. Uh, also, uh, Derhar Gostanyan has been, uh, has been generous enough to open Holy Trinity Armenian Church from 10.30 to 11.30 today. If anyone would like, there's a group of us that are gonna go over and uh, and pray and, and visit the church. So if you would like to do that, we welcome everyone to join us. In closing, I bet you thought this would never come. In closing, on this, the 100th anniversary of the Armenian Genocide, we rededicate ourselves to truth. Today's program was in tribute and respect to the victims the survivors of the jo Armenian Genocide. By the grace of God, our family members survived and came to this great country, a country that welcomed us with open arms and provided wonderful opportunities for those that were willing to work hard and pursue the American dream. We thank our clergy, we thank our speakers, and we thank our elected officials, and we thank you for being here today to share this time with us. This brings our flag raising ceremony to its close. Thank you very much. <laughs>